On today's episode, China's space station is expanding, Rocket Lab is gearing up to compete with SpaceX, and NASA has a new problem with the Viper Moon rover. This week, China announced new plans to expand their Tiangong space station to double its current size. Tiangong is one of two space stations currently in orbit, and while the long-standing International Space Station is significantly larger, Tiangong has a distinct technological advantage due to it being 20 years younger. However, in this case, size does matter. With its current three-module configuration, China's space station can only support a crew of three people for a long-duration stay, and that greatly limits the amount of work that they can accomplish up there. Chinese media reported that growing experimental demands are already placing higher requirements on the space station's available space and energy supply. Phase 1 of Tiangong came together pretty fast, with the existing three modules being launched and assembled in 2021 and 2022. By expanding the station to six modules, it would extend the Chinese station's volume from about 20% to around 40% of the ISS. The first new module plan for Tiangong will be a multi-docking adapter with six ports that will attach to the Tianhe core module at the base of the existing T-shape. This is where they currently have a docking port for the cargo resupply ship. The new multi-adapter will mirror the way that the current three modules are connected, so eventually what we'll get is a shape that looks like two T's stacked on top of each other. Doubling the module count for the Tiangong would also give China twice as many docking ports for spacecraft. This will be helpful since China's space agency wants to develop two new crewed vehicles. One would only visit the moon, but the other would be specifically for low Earth orbit. And that plays into China's new ambition for opening up Tiangong to more international cooperation. Earlier this year, China's Human Spaceflight Agency announced it would be training astronauts from Pakistan to live on the station. They would be the first international astronauts to visit so far, but the Chinese have claimed to be in talks with other countries regarding flights of their astronauts to the station as well. It's unclear when any of the three new core modules will launch, but China has indicated that they intend to continue using their Long March 5B rocket for the job, which became infamous during the first phase of Tiangong construction for raining down flaming debris from space onto random parts of the Earth. That is a problem, and it stems from the Long March 5B being just a little bit underpowered for the job of putting a space station into orbit. So in order to get the performance they need out of the rocket, the Chinese run the first stage booster engines longer than usual. So instead of falling back down like a normal booster stage, the whole main body of the Long March 5 actually ends up in a very low orbit around the Earth, and then it slowly falls back down over the course of a few days until it re-enters the atmosphere and becomes a cloud of broken metal that inevitably lands somewhere. Typically the ocean, but sometimes it lands where people live, and that's not good. A Chinese official acknowledged this in a media interview saying the main focus will be on enhancing reliability and safety. On one hand, we aim to further improve the safety of controlled re-entry of the first stage rocket body through optimized design. Not exactly the most reassuring statement, but they are working on it. While the Chinese haven't specified when the next core module of Tiangong will launch, we do know that the next scheduled flight of the Long March 5B is set to deliver a very interesting new space station accessory, China's first space telescope. It's going to be placed into an orbit very close to Tiangong so that it can very easily be serviced on spacewalks. The new Chinese telescope will be roughly equivalent to the Hubble in terms of size, with a 2 meter diameter main mirror, although being 30 years ahead in technology, will allow China's space telescope to see the galaxy in much higher resolution with a 2.5 million megapixel camera that is designed to investigate dark matter and its effect on the evolution of the cosmos. That launch is currently scheduled for December 2026. Rocket Lab is an aerospace company out of New Zealand that has taken the world by storm in the time since their first test launch in 2017, quickly becoming known as a leader in the small satellite launch market with their Electron rocket, a small but mighty and incredibly reliable launch vehicle. And now, Rocket Lab is looking to become the first commercial space company that will actually compete with SpaceX. In order to do that, they are rapidly developing a new product that could become the cheapest and most flexible rocket ever made, and they want to launch it this year. 
Neutron is a medium-lift, reusable rocket, which is said to be capable of launching and landing pretty much anywhere on Earth with minimal launch infrastructure. The rocket has two stages, like most rockets, but unlike other launchers, Neutron's second stage is located inside the booster, almost acting like one of those Russian nesting dolls. Unlike most other rockets, Neutron's payload fairings are permanently attached to the booster stage and can open up like a clamshell to release this second stage before closing again and returning to land. Visually, the rocket would be identical on landing to what it looked like at takeoff. This unique payload mechanism was recently tested by the company and gives us a pretty good idea of what it looks like in operation. This new approach to reusability means that Rocket Lab will recover as much of the rocket as possible without sacrificing capability. So Neutron would have a capability similar to the SpaceX Falcon 9, but with an even higher level of reusability and versatility that approaches the SpaceX Starship, albeit much less powerful than Starship, but that doesn't make it useless. In fact, Neutron is looking useful enough that it's already been chosen for an experimental US Air Force mission as soon as 2026. They want to test Neutron for point-to-point -point cargo transport missions on the Earth, basically meaning that you load the rocket up with a payload and launch it from one location, and then instead of flying to orbit and releasing the payload into space, the rocket actually comes back down and lands somewhere else on Earth to deliver said cargo. If that sounds familiar, it's because of the SpaceX Starship, which Elon Musk has advertised as being capable of taking cargo or people from any place on Earth to any other location in less than 45 minutes. This is where the Air Force wants to make use of Neutron's reusable capabilities. We know that the military has been interested in Starship for the same kind of mission for years now, but we also know that SpaceX has a priority for Starship to land people on the moon and then Mars. So in the first few years, there might not be enough ships to keep everyone satisfied. And that is why this new contract is so valuable for both Rocket Lab and the Air Force, since Neutron is one of only two rockets in the world that would theoretically be capable of this type of flight. We've also received a long-awaited update on the NASA-developed Viper Moon Rover. Viper, or the Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, is a vehicle that was designed to explore the lunar south pole in search of water and other useful resources for future crewed missions. It's a project that encountered some pretty major hurdles last summer, being cancelled by NASA due to cost overruns. At NASA, there's a rule that says any program going over budget by more than 30% must undergo a re-evaluation by the US Congress in order to continue. In this case, Congress didn't see any convincing reasons to keep that program afloat, and they voted to end Viper's development, which is a shame because the rover itself had already finished construction and was about 95% of the way to being ready for launch. But it was a delay in the launch date that caused NASA's plan to fall apart. Viper should have been on its way to the moon last fall, but that had to be pushed by a year due to issues with the landing platform, which was being built by a private company called Astrobotic. This delay meant that the teams working on Viper would need to be paid for an extra year to oversee a fully built rover, and that's what pushed the program over budget and led to the eventual cancellation. Now, Obviously, NASA doesn't want to just throw away a perfectly good moon rover, one that's already cost them around half a billion dollars. So, they've made a pretty unique move to essentially start trying to auction off Viper to any private company that might want to continue the mission with their own funding. The cost to the buyer would be whatever is necessary to get the rover to the moon, as well as operate it on the surface, which is expected to be between 150 to 200 million dollars. However, you can't just throw a rover up on eBay, and the selling process has been even more difficult than NASA imagined. After failing to attract any serious bidders over the past three months, NASA has ultimately decided to take Viper back off the market. Now, that doesn't mean they've given up. The agency wrote in a statement, quote, following an evaluation of partnership proposals to land a water-seeking robot on the lunar surface, NASA is instead opting to explore alternative approaches. Exactly what these alternative approaches might be remains a mystery, but in theory, as long as NASA holds on to the finished rover and maintains its original purpose, then ultimately, the destination for Viper will be the South Pole of the Moon. It's just going to need a very creative solution to get it there.